name's Steve, uh, working on the house. But I won't be working. Thank you. I won't be working on the house today. Uh, a little bit of a side project. I thought long and hard. We've got two vehicles in the house. This is my wife's car. Um, last year to a, to a nicer car. But I need to move my toes around, and I'm absolutely desperately lost without a tow bar. I mean, historically, normally it's been my own vehicle. I don't really want to put a tow bar in my own push car. Quite straightforward. I've done various tow bar brackets before, but um, never on this particular model. So let's see how it goes. Okay. So one of the things you've got to do is um, remove the rear lights. I can never quite remember how to do this. They always end up trying to remove the nuts, and I realise no, you don't do it that way. Let's see if I remember how to do it this time. First things first, pull the little tabs that allow me to click out the light. And it's actually, I believe, this nut here that you undo. to do it and then that exposes these torx bolts on the outside so to repeat on this side large plastic finger nut Clever design, you got this restraint to stop it, stop it, stop it um, falling down the hole. retaining clips on the other side that fit into these square holes. See before where I struggled with this one where it's really really tight.
So for this bit, I have to go underneath the car. And uh, I think in the YouTube video that I looked up, it's three bolts, one, two, and one on the other side. And I think what I'm gonna have to do is just give it a squirt of WD-40. It's, it, it's pretty crusty and corroded. Hopefully that got some on the threads. Just got enough room. That's good. What I'm going to do is I'll tighten them back up before I take them out completely. That way I can just make absolutely sure they're not going to snap off. We'll clean the threads. Because I remember when I did my um, golf, I had this issue and I managed to snap a couple. Brilliant. in there from the other side. Is as well, it's not to build up too much heat into the bolt, so go nice and slowly. Yeah, 
this for being fragile. do and I'm gonna leave that one come back to it and try the other one on the other side at all. I think possibly because I'm in the UK the uh, the near side the side facing the um, the curb it's getting most of the dirt and the water and the salt and everything else so it's probably corroded more perfect Okay, so I've had a little bit of a read up of the instructions and basically you remove this rear cross member there's just three bolts on either side and then the, um, the towing bracket which replaces that will go in that place and that will then reveal the holes in the chassis rails where the legs will go in 
Excuse me. keep that safe to one side and then if I uh, ever come to sell the car I can remove the tow bracket and either sell it on separately or just literally for taking off the tow bar because a lot of people don't like to buy a car that's had a tow bar fitting because they don't know if it's been abused. Okay, so Ooh. now I've removed the um, rear cross member and a bit more of a look I can see how the system works now it's quite clever and you basically have um, captive nuts and cages and the idea being is these nuts sit in these cages while you're doing the, the bolt up from the outside quite clever and then you have this one which sits near the rear and basically allows you to do the same out the back when they um, when they manufacture the cars they actually cover the holes in tape to stop any ingress of uh, dirt and moisture so what you need to do is just take something sharp, like a screwdriver, and just pierce that hole. Like so. Other than allow you to pass the bolt through, he said. Okay. 
You can see now it'd be very difficult to hold that nut in place while you're doing it up. That's why they provide these. Let's do that up loosely. And then we're going to do the one at the back as well. This is going to be a little bit more tricky. Because I've actually got the, the liner in the way here. nice and easy. Hopefully this side will be uh, just as easy. Again we've got to pierce the um, protective film. Easy. I, uh, I haven't got the room to show you, but basically, there's a room there to get your fingers in to actually grip the bolt either side uh, which is virtually impossible to turn it to get it started What I need to do now is before I tighten anything up, now I've got all the bolts started, is the new toe bracket cross member.
really puts, puts people off.
That's a pretty good guess. I kind of assumed that the, um, the brown wire would probably be the ground. It's probably the chunkiest wire. So it's probably going to have the greatest load if all the lights are on. So I applied the um, negative to that. And um, the green wire was the right hand indicator. I don't know if you can make it out, but um, that wire there had a green tracer on. So I just made the assumption that um, that could be the right indicator. So first shot. Perfect. And then I've sussed out the wiring. I can put this back. Um, it's quite nice with this because the wiring basically starts on the, the near side and travels across the back um, to the other light so I'm actually able to intercept the cables just as they come in through the in through the back here so rather than having wires trailing all the way across I can literally just join it in here and then it's all accessible from one single point and it's um, it's not going to interfere with if changing bulbs or anything else like that with um, erroneous cables. So yeah, let's do that. Let's do. And uh, because I've connected the two wires, that's the right hand or offside indicator. So that's working fine. Hopefully the um, audio quality is a little bit better. This is the following day and um, just trying to give you a close-up shot of the solder joint. So you can see I've basically stripped back the insulation a little bit which has exposed the copper wire. Then I was able to tin that copper wire and then I was able to take the pre-tinned yellow wire and piggyback it onto the top. So that's not affected the integrity of the original wire and now I can just put a little bit of tape over the top just to insulate it and uh, that should be a good strong electrical connection that should be well, that should last a lifetime really so I'll put you back on tripod and um, I'll go and do the rest that was basically both indicators done now with the earth so that's all done uh, it's just side lights now and the fog light I think left and stoplights as well, isn't it? Red. Which will that be then? do is I'll um, pop the multimeter behind the headrests, sorry in between the headrests and then I should be able to press the brake pedal and see the multimeter. Mission on! Nope, that's the clutch pedal. There we go, 12 volts. Good guess, Steve. Mission off. So, black with a red tracer. Which is that one there? Put 
put a little bit of tape on this joint now. And the other way of doing it, I'm sure I've seen people do it before, they'll cut the wire and then solder them all together and they can use heat shrink over the top of the whole wire then which in some respects is better but I'd rather leave the integrity of the original wire oh. is there two? is that one each side? yep yeah, I believe it is it's the the easiest one. So just do a little nip there, little nip at the top and then slide down. Try not to cut your fingers off. There we go. You can see the copper inside now. You only need to expose a little bit of the copper, you can get some heat on it and then the insulation will melt, melt back. And, um, you can then just peel it back cleanly with your fingernail. that stop lights red uh. I always trim back slightly more than I need in the wire and then just nip the end on it and test that again. Oh, no, what's she doing? I need my glamorous assistant to help oh, me. Stephen, stop. Wearing beautiful footwear. <laughs> Your hideous crocs. Mm. Mm. So, ignition on please, madam. Is it? Oh, I've driven for weeks. No, ignition on, that's oh. engine on. Yes, yes it is. You might be glamorous, but my God. <laughs> and brake on. Can you see that? The brake, <laughs> Sorry, I was pressing the clutch pedal earlier. Lovely. Off. Beautiful. Is that it? That's it. Okay. You're welcome. Stop now, please. <laughs> Okay, so last one I need to find. No, it's not the last one. I've got two more left. 
Uh, I need to find, I think it's side light next. Black. Okay, tail light. So I need to put the lights on. the chime you can hear. Oh, good guess again, getting good at this. So that's the grey with the black tracer. in the end of the iron again. It's easier to transfer the heat. Yeah, let's clean that one. The danger is if you um, melt the wire, you can make the wire dirty and the solder doesn't want to stick to it. That's when you end up with dry joints. So. exposed now. There we go, that's better. Right. Like a dream. Yeah, so if you tin the wires properly and make sure you have a little bit of solder on the end of the soldering iron, it's just magic. You just touch them together and they will just flow together and you'll get a really good, nice, clean, strong joint. So I don't think I've ever done this before, but um, yeah, clear as day on the um, on the wiring diagram, it shows a right-hand tail light as well. So um, I've identified the right-hand tail light one, which is the grey with the red tracer. So that's as it was grey with a black tracer on the other side. So um, yeah, might as well do it all properly, and I'll do that one as well. And again, I can do that from the midpoint in the boot. at this point with the other wires safe traversing right the way across the back so I'll do that next okay to 
in the tip. There's some clean solder on there. There we go, it's nice and silvery now. That's flowed straight in. So, what colour was that then? That was brown. So you notice I haven't done it tight, so I'm leaving a little bit of slack. So if I ever need to remove the tow bar or do any maintenance there's a little bit of room to manoeuvre so there's plenty of space behind here behind the trim <clears throat> tin the wire in the iron. Oh. Getting old. It hurts my back. Right, okay, that's not very good. Looked okay on the front, as soon as I turn the cable around you can see it's Solder's not flowed to the back, so that's where problems occur. Yeah, let's remove that, do that again. Put the lights on. Perfect. So that's both on right and left. <laughs> 